Before I get started with today's video, I have to share with you guys this new children's book that we were just gifted, Who Has a Pet Hamster? Not only does this book have beautiful illustrations, but I think it's one of the first children's books to show proper hamster care. Throughout the book, it introduces you to the basic hamster care, as well as shows you the importance of visiting a vet. I think this book would make a great addition to grade school classrooms, any parents with young children, or even if you have younger siblings who want to learn more about hamsters. So if you're interested in purchasing the book for yourself, I'll leave the link down in the description bar below, and now on to the video. I've made videos very similar to this one before, but I think this is a topic that is super important to continue to talk about. In my last video where I shared all of my hamster supplies, a lot of people become overwhelmed with how much hamster stuff I have, and sometimes it upsets them because maybe they don't have as much hamster stuff currently, but I don't think a lot of people realize is I've been owning hamsters for 12 years and I did not start off with that much stuff. So because a lot of new people come onto my channel and they just watch my newest videos seeing the current care I have and not my extremely old outdated videos, it's important for me to kind of take you along and show you that I also started off with incorrect care, dangerous products, making my own homemade stuff, small cages and barely any enrichment. So I started off owning hamsters in 2009, 2010. My first hamster was a long haired male Syrian hamster named Buddy. And he unfortunately did have to live in some small cages. He lived in a extreme critter trail cage. He lived in a habit trail OVO pod. And uh, I think he also lived in a part of a tank for a while. He had a wire wheel. He had the cotton fluff no enrichment, the whole, the whole shebang. It really wasn't until I got my hamster pumpkin, my short haired male Syrian hamster, where my care started to change. So I got pumpkin in 2011 and the enclosure that he was in is actually the one that I use for educational videos on small cages now, which is super unfortunate. But thankfully, I had joined some hamster forms and immediately learned about all of the mistakes that I was doing. So eventually, that leads me to asking my parents to build bin cages because I thought they would be a really good idea to upgrade my hamster's enclosures and give them a bigger space. And so that brings us to this video. This is my first cage tour video in 2012 when I moved Pumpkin into a bin cage. I think this bin cage probably has, I want to say around 290 to 300 square inches of floor space. So it is still small, but it definitely is better than the living world cage I was using. And you can see in the video, the cage is just, it's, it's not great. Honestly, the, I have half paper bedding and then I have half shredded paper bedding because at the time I was trying to save money. And I'm sure it was only like this thick of bedding. All we got in there is we have an egg glue, a six inch silent runner or a silent spinner wheel, not large enough, um, a homemade level with a Kleenex box on top, which is fine, but I don't think pumpkin actually could fit <laughs> in that. And then I just have a dish with a bunch of food in it and the diet is super bland. So that was like, that was what I thought was a good cage in 2012. Once you join the hamster community and you start seeing everybody else's cages, it really makes you always want to upgrade your cages and make them bigger every single time. So three months later, May of 2012, um, my dad built me a wooden hamster enclosure. It was a, like a double decker for one hamster on top, one hamster on bottom. And... Uh, I think it had 360 square inches of floor space. So not a huge upgrade, but kind of an upgrade. Now this was an interesting cage. Um, it was amazing that my dad built it, but the whole front piece was mesh all the way to the bottom. So I couldn't put a lot of bedding without it all falling out when you open the door or even if the hamster walked by the mesh. So unfortunately I did have to put only a slight amount of bedding and once again it's still just super boring we got the six inch 
silent spinners for both of the Siri and hamsters. I got some tunnels, a tube, chew toys, and a glue. That is literally all that is in there. Then a whole year later in 2013, I went ahead and asked my parents if we could use their 100 gallon aquarium that was just sitting outside collecting dust. So they went ahead and lugged that in to the house for me and I built a divider to divide it in half for each of my hamsters and that gave them each about 570 square inches of floor space. So that was a little bit better, but once again, I just, I. I didn't fill it with a lot of stuff. My cages seem to keep getting bigger and bigger throughout this time period. And a lot of the stuff, the enrichment just stays the same. So in this one, at least I have the eight inch Wodent wheels for each of the Syrians. Still not quite big enough, but way better than the six inch. I have slightly, slightly a bit more bedding. I think probably like this much. And then we got like a bendable bridge uh, a glue, a, a bridge, a tunnel, a water bottle, and some food, and some chews. Still very boring. In 2014, I went ahead and gave the entire 100 gallon tank to just one hamster. So that is 1,152 square inches of floor space. So that was great. But once again, it got bigger. I put a couple more accessories in, but it was nowhere near anything for the hamster to do. We've got the eight inch Wodon wheel, we've got a hideout, bendable bridge, another log, puzzle playground. It's so boring. It's, I, it's. <laughs> then in 2016, I got my first Ikea Detoff. I had my two hybrid dwarf hamsters living in this enclosure. This is not something that I would recommend or ever do again. I personally think that all hamsters do best alone in captivity. When I look at this cage, I do think it is slightly better than the previous years, but it still is so boring. And it's just, there's nothing for the hamsters to actually do, if it makes sense. The only thing they really could do is run on the wheel, which for some reason I went back to using the six inch silent spinners for the dwarfs, I don't know why. And there still just isn't really a lot of bedding for them. It wasn't until 2018 where I started learning more about German hamster care and that's when I kind of created my first German inspired hamster cage with a cage that we had made from an old dresser. It had around 660 square inches of floor space and the hamster that lived in there was Tater Tot, my Roboroski. This cage I was really, really proud of because I did add a lot more enrichments for the first time ever and I did get to witness a hamster actually burrowing for once. Up until then, I literally never seen a hamster burrow and I always was like, oh, my hamsters just don't like burrowing. Well, that's what happens when you don't provide your hamster with enough bedding. So in this enclosure, I actually have a sand bath. I've got a cork log, some grapevine wood. I put in some orchard grass hay for nesting. I also have some willow for them to chew. It still doesn't have as much enrichments. Um, one thing that I had with it is these popsicle stick fences and those I will never use again. My past hamster Aspen actually tried to jump the fence and she got her leg caught in between. And so she had a broken leg for a little bit. And so I will never use popsicle sticks ever again after that incident. So still in 2018, I was using my Ikea Detoff for my female Syrian hamster, Honey. And I also had made this a natural enclosure. So I was definitely moving in the right direction. With the Ikea Detoff, it definitely is a lot harder to make a great cage setup due to the height and the width. But I definitely was doing my best Unfortunately, because of the wheel as well, I had to slope the bedding, which is not really my favorite thing now. I really like to keep bedding depth even throughout the entire enclosure, but I do have a sand bath. I do have a decent amount of bedding. I think that's at least eight to nine inches on the one side, as well as I also have grapevine wood and cork logs, some shavings on one side for a different texture. I've got the willow leaves. And I think I even have a two chamber hideout that I made myself because at the time, 2018, 
there actually was not a lot of multi-chamber hideouts for sale. Then in 2019, I finally built my DIY enclosure that has 1,152 square inches of floor space, very similar to the 100 gallon aquarium that I once had. This enclosure was for my female Syrian hamster Bumble, who I just found was showing a lot of stress signs in the IKEA Detoff, and I was super unhappy with the fact that I couldn't put a lot of bedding, the width kept making you not be able to set the cage up the way I wanted to set it up. So that's why I went with this enclosure. I love the height of this enclosure and the width. I can actually make decent setups with it. Now with this enclosure, when I take a look at it, I'm like, wow, that looks like such a large enclosure. And it's so funny because I have the exact same sized enclosure now. And I definitely feel like it looks smaller because I've just been able to actually create better hamster cage setups. While this cage setup isn't the worst, it definitely could be improved a lot. There's a lot of open spaces that I could have filled. I do have a lot of different things. And then in 2020, I got my long haired Syrian hamster Lenny and this was his first cage setup. It actually, once again, is not that great of a setup. I mean, it's decent. We've got a six chamber, multi chamber hideout in there for him. He's got an 11 inch Wodent wheel, a nice big sand bath. He's got grapevine wood and cork logs and another hideout. But I just see so much potential. I could have put so much more enrichment in there for him because once again, there's not a ton of stuff for Lenny to actually do. And then that brings us to 2022 and my enclosures and how they look right now. So starting off with Mabel's enclosure, which is the same size as my other DIY enclosures. And as you can see, it just looks so much better. It's a lot fuller, which some people have an issue with, but these enclosures and the setups they have right now is what works for them. It is not too crowded for them. They like how everything is set up. There are different pathways for them to get around things and they use every inch of the enclosure. As you can see, I have many different substrates. I have at least four, no, five, I have five, one, two, I have five different substrates for Mabel to be able to go in, dig, feel the textures. We've got moss in there as well, grapevine wood, platforms, a six chamber, multi-chamber hideout. We've got a 12 inch silent runner in there for her cork logs, as well as tunnels that go underneath into the ground, as well as a peak away hideout for her. So there's just so much more. We also sprinkle her food everywhere and she's got herbs and uh, sprays for her to forage for. So this is just such a long ways it's taken me to get to this type of enclosure. Same goes for Dipper's enclosure. He just has so much. Also, both of my Syrian hamsters, I think their enclosures have at least 13 inches of bedding, if not more. I haven't measured it recently. I just know it's around that. Dipper also has about four different substrates in there for him to dig in. He's got different ceramics. He's got 11 inch wooden wheel, different hideouts, cork logs, grapevine wood, um, another six, chamber, multi-chamber hideout. He's also got um, sprays and forage. So there's just so much more for him to do. And last but not least, we have Waddle's enclosure. His is adapted more for his Chinese hamster -ness. So there's a lot more grapevine wood for him to actually climb on. There's more little bridges. He still has different substrates as well. Not nearly as much as the Syrian hamsters, but he still has different ones other than sand. He also has a really deep bedding. I'm pretty sure it's 10 inches all the way through, if not more. He also has an 11 inch Wodent wheel and sprays and herbs and food sprinkled everywhere. And it's not a bunch of open space so that he's not feeling super timid when he comes out at night. So that has been the evolution of my cage setups. And this is a reminder that it took me 12 years, 12 years to get to this point in my hamster care. So when you see my newest videos, please try to keep in mind that it is definitely possible to get to this point, but it doesn't always happen overnight. Any sort of progress in your hamster care is good progress. 
doesn't matter if it's just something small. If you instead start to sprinkle your hamster's food instead of feeding them in a food dish, that is good progress. I really hope this video will help people to understand that it literally doesn't happen overnight. This took me so long to get to this point and I am still continuing to learn and grow with the care that I have for my hamsters. I hope in two more years I can do this video again and be like, wow, look at the care that I had in 2022. I'm doing so much better. I hope I can say that. So yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.